And I'm live. Well, I think I am anyway. <laughs> so, what's going on on the channel? Why is the Argajillion episodes being uploaded? <laughs> Has somebody suddenly gone crazy and uh, just gone on some sort of painting bonanza? <laughs> And it's true, hopefully this mic is okay. It's true that I have gone on a painting bonanza and I'm really enjoying it, really enjoying myself. Um, I've actually got the uh, Bill Alexander two and a half inch brush ready to get going as well. Oh, there's already paint on it. <laughs> I only have to look at a brush and there's paint on it. Amazing. Yeah, so my plan is <laughs> to just to paint and paint and paint and just do uh, loads and loads of paintings and just keep posting them, posting them, posting them. <laughs> I'll um, have a comment from North Stars. Greetings from Germany. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you very much. I'm uh, doing... I, uh, I sat at the computer... And I thought, I probably should start thinking about designing paintings before I just set my easel up and paint. Because <laughs> it might make it easier and I'm less likely to make a mistake. But then again, it's quite fun uh, just having a go and just painting, uh, just thinking, oh, what can I do? Right, just do it. <laughs> I quite enjoy doing that. Uh, current Michael Sullivan firing that almighty big brush. <laughs> yeah, the almighty big brush. A two and a half inch. I'm looking forward to having a crack with this properly. I did have a go at it uh, once, um, but I haven't really had a good, good, good go with this brush. I'm looking forward to having a go. Yeah, so I might talk a little bit about how I got started with a wet on wet technique as well uh, because obviously like a lot of people um, we come across a certain painter uh, who's got the really relaxing uh, voice and just does paintings in 27 minutes really easily called Bob Ross and uh, I was watching The Joy of Painting because it was on uh, Discovery Channel and I didn't actually have it but someone else did and they was recording it for me because I really wanted to learn how to paint. And uh, originally, I was uh, looking in books. And when you first start, there's, there's so much to learn, isn't there? There's, there's, my brain was going everywhere. I didn't even know where the brain should go. <laughs> I was like, oh, should I learn watercolor? Should I learn acrylic? Should I, should I learn how to draw better uh, what should i do my brain was going ah, all over the place and then uh I, I really wanted to paint um i enjoy painting the most out of all the things drawing and everything <laughs> wait there is only drawing drawing or painting coloring yeah <laughs> i really enjoy painting the most and that's what i wanted to do is what i've always wanted to do right from originally and uh, and then I saw Bob Ross doing these paintings, and I was like, whoa, how can he do that so easily in such a short space of time? And I was, my, my jaw had gone boing, and, uh, and I thought, maybe I should get a, a set of paints and have a go at this. This looks like it's possible for me, a non-artist, like a non-trained artist, I thought this might be possible. I might be able to do this because I've done other paintings like acrylic paint and watercolors before that, and I couldn't do it, to be honest. I couldn't. I, I just didn't really know what I was doing. Where watching someone painting a whole painting all the way through, it's really exciting. It's like, whoa, this is something I can follow and I can copy a few paintings first and then once I've copied a few maybe I can do my own and that that was the idea uh, comment from 
Liam Matthew, fantastic work as always. Thank you very much. It's good to get the positives. Good to get the positives. <laughs> yeah, so I was watching uh, watching the Bob Ross Bob Ross episodes, and uh, I was watching them all the time. And then uh, I finally got my master set, <laughs> and I got it quite cheap on eBay, and it was brand new, still in its packet. And uh, and I, and, I, and I was like, wow, um, I'll be able to do a painting just like Bob Ross, and it'll look just as good because I've got the master set and the same brush and paints he's used. And I had to go, and I made an absolute mess. <laughs> an absolute mess. I really, I really did. It was. Um, it was, I expected, because I was using the knife, I had the brushes, I had the paints. There's no way I could fail on this one. <laughs> but you, you're not going to expect to do it in your first go. I thought I could, but I couldn't. I made a right mess. I couldn't get anything to really work, but there was one thing that worked for me, and that was the reflections. I was like, doing the tree my tree it looked didn't look too bad i actually thought the tree looked pretty good and i was like oh that's actually working this these these fan brushes actually work <laughs> these damn these magical brushes <laughs> i could use the fan brush and i did my tree i was like huh a tree it looks really good how can i reflect it in the water and i was like oh i'll try and do it upside down and it worked. I was like, "Oh, well, this is working." And I, and I did pull the paint into the water, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is working as well." The mountain didn't work. I mean, <laughs> some people send me pictures on uh, Facebook, and they say, "This is my first painting, or my second painting." What do you think? And I always look at them, and think. They're way, way, way better than what I could have done on my first, second, third, fourth, fifth painting. <laughs> and uh, to answer uh, T, is it T Hogue? Hog? T Hogue? I'm, I'm bad at names. I'm bad at. Um, Hi from Texas. Are you self taught? To answer that question is, I kind of am. And. Uh, well, let's put it this way. I've not been to art school. <laughs> I've not learned. I've, I've earned, the only art classes I've been in is um, like GCSE art. And let's face it, that wasn't exactly a school of art of any kind because it's like what we want you to do is draw some people. Here's a pencil. Draw a person. <laughs> or... Draw whatever you like. Here's some paper and pencils. Well, that's not really an art school of any imagination. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe other people have had better experiences at GCSE art, but for me, I thought it was rubbish. There was no uh, education in it at all. <laughs> but me being uh, a wannabe educator, I'm educating to a level. I just think that that was rubbish for me. But maybe it was good in other schools and for other people. But I wanted to learn skills, skills, how to do things. Hello, Vera Campbell, Vera Campbell, our homestead. Hello. What was the most difficult thing you painted with the wet on wet from Liam Matthew? Well... The most difficult painting... Um, well, I did try and do a portrait using the wet on wet technique, <laughs> and that was difficult. That was very difficult, actually. Um, you see, the wet on wet technique is a lot more, um, it's hard to explain because the better you get at the wet on wet technique. I think you could paint anything using that technique. I think the potential of it 
is that you could paint anything, but you would have to uh, some at some point you'd have to let it dry and then do more paint on, painting on it. But that's oil painting. Um, I think the wet on wet technique it's <laughs> it's got so much potential. I think um, to do a lot more. Um, th this is what my mind's saying anyway. My mind's going of what you could do when I've, I've started getting painting and I'm like, oh, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. And I want to do so much more. But I also want people to uh, be able to do it as well. So what I'm going to try and do, this is my, my uh, recent idea, is I want to do a mixture of skill levels. So I'll do uh, the majority of them it would be nice for people to watch it and think, well, I could do that um, easily or I could follow along. And I know people have followed along with my recent paintings because I've seen what they've done and they're doing fantastic, fantastic paintings. And uh, so I know that what I'm putting out is something people can do, but I have got this real, I have got this is a good uh, question, actually, uh, from Liam. I have a painting. I have a heck of a painting idea that I want to do in the wet on wet technique. And I keep thinking, oh, shall I do it today? Shall I do it today? I might do it. Might do it next week. Um, and it is a challenge. It's going to uh, be a real challenge. But I know it's possible um, because I've thought about it a few times. <laughs> Because a good way of painting is paint it in your mind first. Imagine uh, what's going to happen each layer of paint you put on. Because the uh, the wet on wet technique, the idea is that you need a base, some sort of a base color. But if you really think about that, you could have any color as your base. I mean. Obviously, you can, and then uh, you could you could leave areas like they do, like um, Bob Ross or Bill Alexander. They'll leave certain areas clear. Maybe they want to put in a uh, a cloud or a building, or they they sort of work. They've already worked it out what they're going to do, and you can play that game. And ah. Uh, and I've got this real, <laughs> it's, a, it's a real a real good one. Um, I keep looking at it. It's actually up there. I painted it traditionally um, over a few days. But I look at it and I've been looking at it thinking, hmm, if I did this in the wet and wet technique, it would work. And I think I could do it all in one go because, because of the idea of... Uh, the thin paint sticking to a thicker paint. When I do the big splash, <gasps> spoiler alert, it's a seascape. And um, when I do the big splash on the side of the, do I spoil it? <laughs> on the side of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I can use a thin paint and splash it up the side of this boat and then uh, that would look pretty awesome um in my head it looks awesome whether it works because you know you never know when you're doing doing a painting there, there are paintings that just don't work and uh <laughs> i've had a f i've had a few of those i've had a lot of those actually in the past loads loads <laughs> i'm not i'm not the, the perfect painter i'm i'm like the the painter that goes, that does a painting, say it didn't work. I go, well, okay. Part of the way through that painting, I thought it could look like a forest scene. Well, that sky worked really well. The mountain was rubbish, but I really like the sky. <laughs> so maybe I'll save that sky and I'll put that sky in a seascape. Because I can remember how to do it because I've already painted it. I kind of think like that, and I think like if a tree works really well, you do an amazing tree, then I can 
think, oh, that tree worked. Cabin was a bit meh. And the, uh, when I accidentally dropped the canvas on the floor, well, that made the painting a little bit off. But <laughs> And I've done that. I have done that. Uh, let's have a look at the comments. Michael Sullivan. I've dabbled in the technique off and on for decades. I always have trouble with mountain highlighting and buildings. Other than that, not bad results. I've got a little tip on the old mountains that might help. Um, oh, I haven't got my knife in here. But when... Uh, imagine... <laughs> Imagine this brush is the canvas, and then imagine this is the knife. Now, a lot of people, when they're putting the highlights on, they'll go like that, all the way down. And uh, I've found, I actually got this off uh, a video. <laughs> it's not my idea. I, I, I learned this. I found someone else was doing it, and uh, and they kept the knife mostly like that, so they started like that, and then went like that, so they never went flat, so they could control that bit of paint. And the other thing is, um, I've noticed Bill Alexander, when he does his uh, highlights, he uses a thinner paint so it sticks. And if you notice that, uh, Bob Ross tends to go with a really thick white paint and, and then uh, just, and because of it being really thick and dry, it breaks. Where Bill Alexander will use a little bit of thinner to thin it and then it, and he puts it on. He kind of does a slightly different technique in some of the videos anyway. Um, <laughs> do it. Remember, I remember when you first... Oh, I've missed loads of comments. I better go back up. <laughs> broke, broke mofo. I was always wondering what about some unconventional surfaces for painting. Like I saw one time a really beautiful painting that was on a school globe of the world. Hmm. Just a thought. Yeah. Was it a painting of a globe? <laughs> Was Did someone buy a globe and then paint the map on the globe? <laughs> yeah, I've seen like paintings on different surfaces. I, I actually, uh, yeah, they do like saw blades and stuff like that and uh i like the idea of a globe painting actually that would really make you think wouldn't it you'd have to do something around um i haven't done anything like that myself on different surfaces um be be fun though someone uh said that i should paint guitars <laughs> i was like yeah yeah Found, oh, I did paint on a fruit bowl once, uh, and I painted some apples in it. <laughs> uh, Vera Campbell, oh, Homestead. I remember when you first started on Facebook, you had long hair. I wasn't sure of yourself. You did the most amazing paintings I've ever seen, other than Bob Ross. Uh, oh, on YouTube, I mean, lol. <laughs> uh yeah definitely i wasn't sure of myself at all really when i when i first started i uh, i had so much passion to do these videos I, and uh the passion kept me going through it really um and i wasn't quite as comfortable in front of the camera as i am now now i am a camera master i know exactly what to do <laughs> Do it. Did you watch Bob Ross, The Happy Painter, a one-hour documentary on his struggles to get recognition? Yeah, that was on uh, the iPlayer. 
I did. I think I watched it before. Oops, I nearly spilt my drink. Um, it's really interesting actually watching, uh, hearing his struggles because when I did a class, because he talks about when he did a class and there was just one person show up. Um, I've done a class where only three people showed up and I was teaching that method, but I, I went for it in the class. I, I did it, made sure everyone did their painting everyone was happy. And, uh, that was good enough for me. Um, I did a, another one like that as well, where there was only a couple of people. It is a it is a struggle. I mean, uh, teaching a day class painting is uh, is a hard, you know, it's a hard it's a hard thing to do. Actually, it's quite difficult, but it's it is fun and it's good to see someone. Uh, do a painting and then they look at it and they're really proud of what they've done. It makes you feel like you've achieved something amazing. You've passed on something and uh, yeah, it's a good feeling. I, I like it when uh, I see that people have done paintings and they post it and they're really happy. So that, that makes me happy that they're happy because uh, it's a good thing to share something, isn't it? Share knowledge or let's let's have a look at more uh did you watch oh yeah i read that one jacob benjamin i'm late missed the announcement uh, i kind of didn't give people much chance <laughs> i was sat at the computer and i was like oh well, I'm, i think i'll do a live because i've got a bit of time I was going to design paintings, and I thought, oh, let's talk about painting. Oh, thanks for the donation. Someone, uh... donated five dollars. Thanks very much. Goes towards the channel. Hey, Jason, one of the one of my favorite paintings of yours was the English breakfast one. <laughs> the intro really cracked me up from. Uh... Ismail, Ismail, uh, Guajardo, that might be that. Sorry if I butcher uh, uh, people's names. Thanks very much for the uh, is it a super chat? I'm not sure. Um, helps with the channel, helps me buy more paint. Um, Michael Sullivan, I love the big playing card paintings. I bought a deck, but I had a go, but I haven't had a go yet. Yeah. I really like doing that. Um, I wanted to paint loads, <laughs> but um, I didn't get going on it. I didn't get going. I did a few, and I did a lot of the small ones as well. But um, I quite like the freedom of the big canvas. Uh, Tim Brabasco. Hey, man, great time to experiment. Do small studies first, then your masterpiece. Yeah, I would suggest that. that that's a really good uh, uh, comment. And uh, it is the right way. <laughs> the right way of doing it, really. Really. <laughs> is to do a lot of thumbnails. Say you've got this idea. You get a little bit of paper. I, I want to... See if I can show you this. So, <gasps> some horrible sketches. Don't want to show those. So, let's do this. So, what you want to do is get a piece of paper. If you've never done this, wow. Some squares, well, rectangles, um, and then you want to do your design in each one, and then and that, that's when artists they do their little thumbnails, that's what they mean. They're doing these little s squares, they do their little design. Oh, I want to do a snowy landscape with a mountain in the back. Oh, lovey, be beautiful. 
That's my design. Well, actually, maybe I'll add a tree and I'll move the tree. And then in your next thumbnail, you can move the tree or you can change it. And, uh, and that is the that is the way. That is probably the way you should do it. But the pros and cons of that idea. The pro, there's probably more pros <laughs> doing these than there is cons, to be honest. And professional artists do just that. They do loads of uh, thumbnails, um, as far as I know. That's the way they teach it anyway. And uh, But then you get painters uh, and professional ones. They uh, just get in there, and they don't even, uh, like, <laughs> they just have an idea. And sometimes they don't have an idea and they're just throwing stuff up and they're experimenting. And suddenly there's like something there. And that's another way. And uh, what's the best way? Uh, financially, this is the best way. Because this way, you can waste a piece of paper. <laughs> hey, look. When I was live drawing, I just did that. I just did... Uh, Stick people. There's all sorts of random stuff in here. As, as you know, my mind is quite random. So, <laughs> a giant with tiny feet. Um, so, yeah. You, financially, you're better off wasting pieces of paper coming up with ideas than uh, using a canvas and painting a painting and then going, eh, I don't really like that. I wish I'd have had the sun over here and then the light could have been a bit stronger this side. And so <laughs> it is a good point. Uh, but, so where was I, I was going on a, a bit of a, a long talk about that. <laughs> Trucker Daddy, a.k.a. John in Quebec. Please. People tease me that Bob Ross didn't produce real paintings. I still think and enjoy producing a technique that suits beginners and advanced alike. Yeah, um, I, I find that a bit strange because I've had that kind of uh, comment. And I still find it strange because whether you're using this brush, a small brush, and you're doing every little mark, or if you're using a big brush and you're smashing in, firing in a big painting, what's the difference? You've still got to learn a craft, whether you're using this brush or this brush. And going back in time, uh, Const John Constable if you've heard of him, he's like one of the greats of English landscape painting. Unfortunately, the English during his time didn't rate him. <laughs> and he used to use big brushes, and he was slopping in the colours. And this was like, oh, forgive me, I can't remember the year, but let's say this was before Monet, before the French Impressionists. This was like Turner and Constable era, so it would be like, what, 1800s? <sighs> I can't remember. I can't remember. But there was John Constable doing these brilliant landscapes, and uh, nobody liked him because he was, oh, he's unconventional. He's using big brushes. You'd use like a brush like this and slop on the paint. And, uh, and, and he was like ridiculed and because he was painting in this new fresh way it, it wasn't liked and I can't understand it because then his painting in France wins a gold medal hello <laughs> he wins a gold medal for his landscape in France so they recognized that the skill involved and uh, I mean now he's known as one of the English masters but in his day. So I, I don't know. I think Bob Ross did really good paintings. I think Bill, Bill Alexander does really good paintings, and they are paintings. Whether 
just because they do them fairly fast. What's it matter? <laughs> I think um, when people think about painters, maybe they think, "Oh, yeah, Michelangelo. You should be uh, should be spending years and years on one painting." Well, it's up to up to you. I, I find that a bit a bit. I find it a bit annoying that people say that because I've had people say that to me, and it just annoyed me. <laughs> I think it doesn't matter, and. Uh, to be honest, it's mostly uh, the snooty painters that tend to attack you when you're doing uh, the Bob Ross stuff because I did get some nasty messages in the past about it and uh, I had someone say, oh, you're, you're teaching a uh, style of painting that doesn't help beginners. I was like, well, it does help beginners because it helped me <laughs> and I was a beginner. I still feel like a beginner, to be honest. I'm always learning, and uh, I can never, I, can, I would not accept it. I always hate, what is it, Jacob Benjamin? I always hated Bob Ross's take on, there are no mistakes. <laughs> of course not, your bloody Bob Ross. <laughs> There's no mistakes. They're just happy accidents. Yeah, I think um, sayings like that, um, I I read it as uh, it's got to, you've got to try and make it uh, more friendly for someone to do a painting. And if uh, you're standing at your canvas and you've got your brush there and you're doing your trees and you accidentally do a really big tree and it's right next to your mountain, so it makes it look like the tree's fifty million feet tall. <laughs> And someone looks at it and go, oh, God, that tree's a bit big. And you go, oh, oh no, a tree. Oh, it was a mistake. That's ruined my life as a painter. <laughs> you kind of want to see it as there's no mistakes, just happy accidents, meaning it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. Sometimes if you do make a mistake, you can change it and just make it something else. And uh, take away the stress, take away the, uh, the uptight painting feeling. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, tree's too small. Oh, that tree's too big. Ah. <laughs> That's what you're trying to uh, escape. Uh, you want people to just go, oh, well, do, 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 do. that tree's too big. Oh, happy accident. <laughs> That's what you want. Uh, going back up. Going back up. Uh, YouTube didn't notice. Wait, wait a sec. JB. YouTube didn't notify me until now. Appreciate all the wet on wet paintings you have been doing lately. You haven't lost the touch. Thanks again. Thanks very much. I did uh, just do a quick notification. Apologies about that. I wasn't, I wasn't planning on doing a live. I just sort of uh, sat here and I was thinking, I better design some paintings. And, uh, and I did this instead. <laughs> it's all right. I've got an idea. I've got an idea ready. Just I'm working for a few days, so I might not be able to do it until... Uh, Wednesday, maybe. Uh, help Michael Sullivan. It helped once I learned heavily loaded brush for highlighting foliage didn't mean hard pressure on the canvas. Yeah. Yeah. When when you're doing uh, like bushes, when you load up your, your one inch brush and you're doing like bushes and you put all this paint on, if you go slop, <laughs> that's exactly what's going to happen your paint's going to go slop onto the canvas and it's going to make a right mess and uh, so if you were uh, just go boop 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 really really light 
And uh, some people give it a little whoop, push, whoop, but really light pressure. And that's how you get that um, kind of lacy, lacy effect. Really nice. Looks like loads of details. Um, really works nice, actually. Really does. Really, really nice. I remember seeing uh, when I was, because uh, I did go to a few classes and uh, when I wanted to be a, an instructor, and there was this chap, uh, Dowell, Dowell Crib, maybe? I think that was his name. Definitely Dowell, anyway. Really cool guy. And uh, and he did his, uh, when he was doing his little bushes, I was like, whoa, they're amazing. They look like Bob Ross bushes. It looked amazing. And I was like, uh, eh, my brush is broken. I goes, my brush is broken. It's not working. And he came over and he was like, eh. <laughs> did like these perfect uh, bushes. And he said, yeah, your brush isn't as good as uh, some of the others. You might need a new one. But he still made it work, even with a, uh, a rubbishy brush. My one was a bit rubbish, but he still did it. And I was like, what? <laughs> but it's because of the pressure, the light pressure and you need it to be quite thin because you dip it in the liquid white and you get it really thin and then pulling it through and then really light pressure it always works then it will always work if it's light pressure and if it's thinner than the uh, dark a thin paint sticks to a thicker paint broke mofo it was a beautiful winter winter scene on the globe ah my aunt used to paint saw blades too. Oh, all right, cool. Woodland and farm scenes, really neat stuff. That sounds awesome. Makes me want to try that. The only thing is, when I'm painting, it would keep spinning around. You'd be like, oh, God, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Unless you're supposed to do something to prevent it from spinning. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, figurative artist Benjamin Lester, such a fan, trying to do videos, but it's a learning curve and <laughs> and flipping expensive. Yeah, um, you're trying to make videos for yourself, I take it. Uh, yeah, it is expensive because well, you've got to get cameras and you've got to edit. You've got to. Uh, buy canvases paints is 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 a pricey thing it is but it's uh, once you get going it's fun and it it's like a, another hobby <laughs> it could be a hobby that you share um trucker uh, oh where, where where are we at mark side bottom love the stream jason can you use a can you use a from brush? Is that foam brush for oil painting? From brush. Could be foam. Um, I've never done it, if that's what you mean. I'm not sure if that's from... Is that a foam brush or from... from not sure. I've only used uh, bristle brushes and uh, synthetic brushes and watercolor brushes. Anything with hairs on, <laughs> I'll use it. Um, Chucker Daddy, a.k.a. John in Quebec. I'm a teacher. I prefer smaller classes. The students get more attention. You have more fun. I More fun, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. You do when I when I was teaching, I found like a class of six, I found I could manage all right. And then when I got a bigger class, I found it harder because everyone was going, Oh, can you help me? Can you help me? Yeah, can you help me? And I was going around the room and that does take a lot of time to go around helping everyone, especially when you really want to try and really help somebody. It's a lot harder than you uh, 
let me think. What program are you using to edit? <laughs> um, I would uh, not like to answer that in uh, on this stream because <laughs> my friend gave me it, and uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure what the best uh, thing to edit with is at the moment. I used Nero for a while, but then that, I tell you what, <laughs> Nero I was editing with. I paid for it. I had the uh, serial number and everything, and it kept saying that I was using a fake serial. Really frustrated me, that did. And then I, before that, I was using uh, Movie Maker. Um I know a lot of people, depending off your if you're using a PC or an Apple, a lot of people either use Premiere or uh, Final Cut. They're the best two, I think. Um, Sony Vegas or something that's supposed to be good. Um, there's quite a lot. I think all you need for editing is where you can have more audio tracks and have more video tracks than one <laughs> if you can get about three or four video tracks and audio tracks you're, you're golden there is a lot of free ones now though because i was searching for an open source one and there's quite a few um i wouldn't i wouldn't like to say which is the best because i don't really do a great deal of editing um because all i've got is at the moment I have my two video files and my which has my audio on each video and then I have a separate audio recorder now so I've got so I've really got a great deal of editing to do and I I don't really bother doing too much <laughs> um Fabrizio hi Jason hello William Matthew Will the producer have a call again? <laughs> well, the phone has been silent for a while, but you never know. You may call. <laughs> Michael Sullivan. I bought a pad of canvas sheets to try. Maybe next attempt. Yeah, um, canvas sheets. Uh, um, are they like canvas panels? I, I like canvas panels. I use them. Um, Tilda Van Well, do you think it is a good idea to stretch your own canvas? I do, if you've got a... Um, well, do I? I'll show you what I use. I'll go get it. So here's a piece of wood <laughs> that's been made into a canvas. Well, not a canvas, it's just wood. And then uh, you get your roll of canvas and you have these. And then you, you pull the uh, canvas and, and stretch it and then staple it. And you do like the two... You do, uh, you do these two and those two first, and then you start working out. As long as you get these four stretched and tight, then you're okay. But is it fun making canvases? Not really. Uh, the only reason I uh, was doing it is because I was saving money. <laughs> See, I had a lot of old paintings I saved, and uh, I was doing the terrible thing of cutting the canvas off, <laughs> chopping it off, and then uh, re canvassing uh, the frame, the stretcher bars, and then making new canvases. Now, that is a good way of saving a few quid. 
it's good to do it on your old paintings, your learner paintings, but then you might start doing some really good ones. You might want to save those. <laughs> uh, uh, Derek O'Donnell, back to the old school oils. I like that. Good paintings, man. Thank you. Glad you're liking them. Um, Michael Sullivan, it'd be boring if all art was one technique in the same medium. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's interesting because in the museums, you see like a language of painting. And uh, back in the day, in the Victorian days, they painted trees the same everyone painted them exactly the same and there was like a the way i saw it it was a language and when people like turner totally changes things up or constable then they're like whoa although turner was quite celebrated in his time wasn't he uh, da, 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 da. derrick o'donnell bob ross is a legend yeah, I agree with that. Helped me a lot. Great appreciation. Uh, Michael Sullivan. All originality. Bill Alexander. Expressions that people think were Bob's. <laughs> yeah. Because, well, Bob Ross is a Bill Alexander student, isn't he? Um, so he's carried on the happy trees and the happy branches and all that stuff, um, which Bill Alexander started and all the that way of painting Bill Alexander well he said he started it but then he realised other people were doing it years and years ago, even Rembrandt used to, uh, it's like the black canvas canvases Bill Alexander thought mm, I'm the smart guy, I worked this out and you'll see in one of his videos he said he thought he'd worked it out he was a smart aleck and then uh finds out rembrandt did it in what when was rembrandt around 1600s was it so it was done years ago <laughs> um miri what's that miriani mccary i just discovered Um, Leonid Afromov the other day. Um, have you seen his paintings? I may have done, I'm not sure. Um, I look at a lot of paintings and I, I don't remember all the names. I tend to uh gravitate towards old impressionist painters and in English painters and. American painters like Sargent. And... I suppose I have I know the names of all the popular ones and then some that are not as popular, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen, you know, loads. Amy Beth Taylor. Ah, it's lovely to see you live. I've appreciated your videos for a few years now. Thank you very much. It's good to be appreciated. Finally, some appreciation. <laughs> uh, Tim Probasco, so funny wearing my Bob Ross shirt right now. <laughs> there are no mistakes. If you can learn from them, they are learning experiences. Yeah, that's what Bob meant. Learning experiences, yeah. Um, North Stars, why did... Why did you start to paint? Jason goes back into his memory. Yeah. Why did I start? It's something I wanted to do. Really wanted to do it. Um, I remember when I copied a uh, picture of Popeye. <laughs> oh, yeah. I copied this picture of Popeye, and it, it, I was really happy with it. Um, but I used to really like this is uh this is a bit of a nerd alert now. For some reason, I don't know how, I ended up collecting stamps. <laughs> so I was uh, a young kid and uh 
I started buying stamps from the secondhand shop and I re- secondhand place, and uh, I really liked the old paintings on the stamps. And uh, I used <laughs> I used to put the stamps in water, and then peel the the old paper off, and I'd have the picture, the nice uh, little painting on the stamp, and I'd put that in my little collection. <laughs> And uh, I remember my dad saying once, uh, um, shouldn't you be going out playing football or climbing trees rather than doing that all day? (laughs) I was like, yeah, I probably should. (laughs) But I really enjoyed uh, looking at the old paintings. And uh, I've just admired it for, for when I was a kid, I admired it. Um, never thought I could paint or anything like that. I just admired what they'd done. I was just amazed by it all. Uh, Phyllis Baird. Hello from California. I think your videos are very helpful, even though I do not work with oil paints. I'm not sure why I made that dramatic. I do not use oil paints. (laughs) Yeah, I'm glad it helps. I don't think it really matters if you use oils, acrylics, squash, watercolors. Um, there are tips to be had. Uh, even when you watch well, any, anyone, anyone doing any kind of painting or art, you may learn something. And uh, I know quite a few people that use acrylic rather than oils, and they can use it really well. Ah, Mark Sidebottom, foam brush sponge at the end oh yeah i've seen seen the foam brush things i i do I, i'll paint with them if i'm doing uh like gesso or um like the start i'm thinking about doing a, a white canvas spoiler alert spoiler alert i'm thinking of <laughs> not sure why i'm doing that it's not like it's a big movie or anything but um i've got this white canvas and i keep looking at it thinking I reckon I'll use an old sponge. I've got a uh, sponge knocking about. It's a natural sponge. I thought I'll do like half the painting using the the gessos and then I'll do the rest of it, you know, like glazing on top and stuff. I think that'd be fun. I really want to do that, actually. So I'm going to have a go at that with the sponge. Uh, these canvas sheets are on a pad like paper. Ah, oh, I've got a pad like that, and I've never used it. <laughs> um, the, the canvas pad. Um, yeah. My hero constable used to use those. <laughs> he used to paint on paper. He used to glue them to uh, pieces of wood. Um, it's a good way. It is a very good way um, to do quick paintings on the cheap side. I might do that actually. I don't, I don't anything is. I'm not sure. Just not sure. I've never done it. Um, be interesting to try it. Uh, Michael, oh, did I miss one? Where are we? Yeah, Judy Cass. Hi, Jason. Hello, Judy. Uh, Michael Sullivan says, I like the times you hang out with Clive. Two great painters. Yeah, that was great fun hanging out with Clive. I'd like to do that again. Um, Hopefully when uh, things calm down in the world, we'll be able to uh, meet up somewhere. Uh, Judy Cass, are you still using water-soluble oils? Yes, I've got a painting on the go. I use anything uh, now. I I don't stick to... Um, just one thing anymore. Um, I switched to water mixable oils because I for a while because I didn't want to have the hassle of the brush cleaning thing, but I seem to have got around that. <laughs> uh, I'm not using any paint thinners or anything, so I'm quite happy. The only thing with that when you don't have any, um, when you're not using thinners and you've got these big brushes can't really clean a brush and then paint and clean a brush and then paint. 
kind of have to have a few brushes. So that's the only minus with that. Um, but I've always thought it's easier to have more than one of each brush because when I first started and I only had one two inch brush and one one inch brush, I didn't quite have the the thought of what's going to happen. <laughs> I've found it a lot easier if you've got a one for darks and one for lights, and then you don't really have many issues with like washing brushes and stuff. Because that's that can be a little bit, um, well, <laughs> who likes washing brushes? I don't like it. I get it myself in a right mess, and uh, I'm not. I'm just not keen on washing brushes. <laughs> I like knocking the paint off and going. <laughs> in fact, uh, sometimes when I'm. Uh, sat at the computer i have my big brush here and on the table side i give it I give it a knock <laughs> just to keep in practice for when i'm painting and i can go <laughs> i do really find it fun and uh i like using the big brushes um i've gone through too long too long without using the big brushes they're so much fun it's it's like uh, I don't know. It's just, it makes me laugh on the inside. I'm trying not to uh, laugh so much while I'm painting. I'm laughing my head off on the inside because it's like it's so big, and you can just do a whole sky so quickly. And I've done so many paintings using the little brush, to... <laughs> and I'm laughing my head off on the inside as I paint this sky. I'm like. What was I doing spending hours doing like a sky? Like I've spent hours on a sky and it looks no better than <laughs> it makes me laugh so much uh, when I'm doing it. And then uh, when I look at the result, it, I, I don't know, it makes me really happy. I, it does really make me happy painting in this technique. Um it just makes me laugh. <laughs> when I think about it, it makes me laugh. But um, I imagine, I think what it is, is I imagine myself with a brush, say, like this, and I'm there going, half an hour later. Oh, I'll change my direction of brush. And then I think of myself with this brush, and I just go, rum, 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 rum. <laughs> That's done. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Oh, it's so funny that um, the difference. Uh, Steve Sippler. Hey, Jason, being a big fan. Blah, blah. Let me put my teeth back in. Hey, Jason, being a big fan for years. So happy you're doing the wet on wet again. I'm doing the winter walk in the mountains now. Oh, fantastic. I've seen some of uh, Steve Sippler's paintings. He, he's doing some fantastic paintings following along. really like them. And uh, <laughs> I got, I got, someone did, uh, did you do the waterfall? I can't remember. I think, yeah, I know, I remember the seascape. I really like the seascape. Um, Mount, yeah. I think you did, you've done three, haven't you? This would be the Another one. Very good. Ooh. Angela Murphy uh, gave me a super chat. I think it's a super chat. $5. Thanks very much. Helping out the channel. I'll be buying more paint with whatever I get from YouTube. <laughs> That's what it goes on. More paint, more canvases. And then uh, more videos. Yippee. More... Uh, Investing in my hobby of painting. Uh, Michael Sullivan, I watch Frank Clark do watercolors. I don't get the whole gouache thing. He'll use white gouache, even though there is white oil color available. Yeah, white gouache is brilliant for watercolor painting. <laughs> if you're like me, and uh, depending how your mind works, because watercolorists can paint thinking about the white paper and using that as the white. But 
I tend to think of like an oil painter that I want to paint the white. So white gouache I would use on top. And the reason he would use white gouache is it's the same components of watercolor paint, except it's got chalk in it, which make it a uh, opaque paint. So you get an opaque color on top of the watercolor which is what you'd want, and uh, it works really well, especially if you're using toned paper. Ooh, it works nice. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I do like gouache painting, to be fair. It's fun as well. And uh, uh, Diana Mulliken, thanks for the uh, $2. All donations go towards paint. Uh, Judy Cass. Oh, well, I won't hear your answer. My phone is just buffering. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, this uh, video will go on my channel because all the lives um, get put on. So you'll be able to rewatch it. Hopefully, uh, it, it, the answer was the answer was substantial and OK. <laughs> Who knows? I go off on uh, little uh, chats about all sorts. Uh Diana Mulliken, love watching your videos. Thanks very much. Michael Sullivan, there's plenty of other ways to beat the devil out of it. Um... <laughs> Let's uh, move forward. Um, are you still making your own paints on T Hog? Um, I am. Sometimes, yeah. I ran out of uh, titanium white, so I made a batch of uh, of that. Um, and it's good to know how to make your own paint because if you've got the pigment, like I bought this big bag of titanium white pigment, and uh, if you're like, oh, ran out, got no paint left, but I've got linseed oil and I've got pigment, I'll just make some of my own. It's not going to be as fine as the bought paint and it's not going to have zinc in it because what you may or may not know, titanium white paint has got zinc white in it. It's not pure titanium white. So when you're making your own titanium white paint, you'll go, this isn't as white as the bought white. Something wrong with this white that I've made. I don't know where I've gone wrong. I've got the titanium white mix. <laughs> I've got the I've got the the linseed oil. It's cold pressed. Why is it not as white as the paint that I bought? It's the same stuff. And then you go, oh, you look on the uh, the, the empty tube, and it says to, it'll have like the pigment code on it. Yeah, there's two pigments. Two pigments? But it's only white. And then you go, oh, well, I'm going to look this up. Titanium white and zinc white. <laughs> and they throw the zinc white in to make the white whiter. But it's for when the sun's on it. Um, well, that's a bad explanation. When you put your white paint on the painting and uh, it's not in the sun, it won't look as white. But when the sun goes on it, it'll start to bleach it a bit and go whiter. This is what I think. I can't remember. Something like this. And then the uh, they put zinc white in it to make it whiter all the time. But then it weakens the paint film. <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's all science. Uh, who knows? But anyway... Who uses pure white anyway? So uh, I just make my own titanium white if I run out. And uh, it's good to be able to do it because if you have run out and you've got pigment and an oil, you can make it. <clears throat> Are you still... Oh, we've had that one. Natasha K, love you. Blue Heart, thanks very much. Uh, Kill Master. Glad you are... <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Kill Master. The master painter. No, he's the master 
master of ceramics, um, baking stuff, making stuff. <laughs> Glad you're doing more wet on wet, back to the roots, yeah. I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. Um, Mark side bottom a red heart with a love you. Uh, Mirani McCary, would you make a painting of a rainy day sometime? Would it be possible? I think it would be possible, and I think it would be fun to do. Would definitely be possible. I have got a rainy picture that I did on the computer that I really liked, and I did think, would I be able to do it? Do I dare challenge myself if I had the old white paint at the end of the painting and go, would it work? It has potential, doesn't it? I think it has potential. Did I do a rainy painting before? Oh, yeah, I forgot about the headlights painting. Um, good call. Uh, Kilnmaster says, I think you did a rainy day back when you did headlights painting. I think it was in the snow. Or was it in the rain? I think it was might have been in the snow. But that's a good point. I haven't done a snowy one with snow either that'd be quite good to do um yeah that'd be a good idea i did i did a painting i don't know where it's gone i did this uh it was really good as well if i don't say so myself i thought it was fantastic but i did this painting of a uh, snow plow smashing through the snow and it looked amazing and i don't know where it's gone <laughs> and that i did that one um, and then I did the headlight one because I did lights in that, and I thought, oh, that's quite a good effect. I'll do a head, I'll do one without the snow plow, which took me ages. <laughs> and I thought, I know, I'll just do one with cars. And uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's more ideas. There's so many ideas, isn't there? That's why I am on a roll and I'm gonna crack on with a load of paintings. Um, so it's going to be good fun and I uh, can't remember what the title of this video is but <laughs> because I've been going on to so many uh, things which has been good because it's good to get comments because then I can talk about other things and it helps with the uh, live stream so you guys um, girls and guys are helping me out with the live stream uh, by commenting and asking questions. And, uh, yeah, I like the idea of a rainy painting. And I have got an idea that I did and that I could make it better. Well, I say that, but who knows? It may not work out. Uh, figurative. Oh, uh, Mirani girl. Smiley face and yellow love heart. So many different colored love hearts out there. There's a blue, a red, and a yellow. Figurative artist Benjamin Lester. I've never painted a car, just tackled lace for the first time. Very fun. It's fun painting a car, actually, because uh, <laughs> I don't know. I avoided cars for ages, and uh, and then when I finally I think I did the snowplow before I did a car, I think. <laughs> when I finally tackled it, I thought, eh, it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really difficult. Um, the most difficult painting I've done is a motorbike. Oh. <sighs> Just thinking about that painting gives me nightmares. I would not want to paint one of them again. It was so challenging. And it was one of those motorbikes where you can see all the engine everything's like open one of these really old bikes and there's no covering on the engine oh, oh. <laughs> and you're painting every little uh little piece of metal ch -ch -ch -ch. and then you're painting all the spokes and then you're painting the suspension oh man it took me ages 
and I did it on this canvas, and it was quite big, quite a big canvas. And uh, I painted it in acrylic because I thought to myself uh, for this painting, I thought, I know, I'll use acrylics, it dries fast, and it'll be, I'll be able to get it done a lot quicker. Not thinking that I'm not as good with acrylic as I am with oil. And uh, I wasn't getting the blending as well. And then I had to sort of change my thought and go, oh, I'm using acrylic, I'm using acrylic. It's different, it's different, it's slightly different. Everything feels slightly different. And uh, But I managed to do it. It did come out really good. And um, my mate who I was painting it for was like gobsmacked when he got it. Um, so he did the job, but oh, that was hard. That was like major challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather just quickly knock a painting out myself <laughs> and have a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I mean, it's good to challenge yourself, but that was real. It was real hard. My favorite painting of yours this is from Flam Alley. Uh, my favorite painting of yours was the commode floor, <laughs> the toilet. <laughs> That is one of my best pieces. <laughs> that should hang in the National Gallery. It should. Um, or in Tate, Tate Gallery, because it would fit well in the Tate. <laughs> they should pay me for that painting. One, one of the big galleries in London should go, I want that toilet on the wall of our greatest display so all the people can come in and marvel at the painting of the toilet that Jason has done <laughs> oh. oh that was a that was a, a fun painting I wonder what kind of response I'd get from painting a toilet actually I, I thought it was a masterpiece and uh I was a bit shocked when I walked it because I was at a scrapyard and uh, I was busting. We just uh, spent ages looking for this part for a car and then I was busting and I, I went, where's the toilet? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a work of art. And I took a picture of that. It was like Amazing. Amazing. Uh, Mark, side bottom, Clive, and you are the best. You are the best painter. Yeah. We are the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Silver, I know I'd struggle like heck with perspective if I painted vehicles. Um, use reference. If you use a reference picture, you can't fail. Well, you can fail. And I have failed. But technically, technically, you can't fail. Um, but yeah, it's just... It's, if you've got a photo, you've got to kind of... This is kind of weird, actually. This is how I do it anyway. I'm not saying it's the way. But it's the way I do it. I take my mind away from what it is. So say I've got a picture of a car that I need to paint, then uh, I'm using these. <laughs> picture of a car. Um, picture of a car you need to paint. I don't think of it as a car. I just think of it as there's red there, shoop, there's red there. And I'm imagining a red car like I did in one of my videos. And then there's red there, shoop, red there. <laughs> I think of it like that. And then light there, dark there. Rather than it's a car, um, it's complex. I just think of it as color, and that's it. And uh, that's a good way of thinking. When you've got a reference picture of something, um, try and uh, break it down into its simplest form and look for those simple brush strokes to try and tell the story of what it is. I find that a really good way, a good route. I find it's a good route anyway. Um, everyone's different, though. Uh, 
it's just my little tip for you. It might help. Then again, it might not. <laughs> uh, the colour is excellent on the toilet. <laughs> I could paint my fish tank. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, uh, Mark side bottom painting my fish tank. I, I actually want to do that. Um, that'd be a good painting idea. I do want to do that. Miriani McCary, I love your transparent ocean. Yeah, that works really well. That did. I really like that painting. Actually, I have not demolished that painting. I do really like that one. Right, I think I better uh, call this live video because uh, I am at work early in the morning. So I'm going to have to go get a few hours sleep. So uh, thanks very much for everyone that has joined in this chat. And uh, I hope you're all having a good time and enjoying watching my recent uploads on all my old uploads too because um i enjoyed making them and i'm enjoying making new ones and it's good to have the support and the uh the likes and the the happy comments is always helpful and uh and yeah thanks very much for listening to me waffle on for over an hour and if you're not watching this live then uh hello also <laughs> you see this is why i haven't got my own tv show <laughs> right let's uh call this thanks very much for watching me and my little guppies in the background and i'll see you at another episode uh get ready for some real tough ones and some easy ones and a lot of fun ones. So thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye. Ciao from Miami.